In this video, I'd like to compare EMB files with machine files. Recently, three separate designs were sent to me. Actually, they are the same design. One file is a native EMB or vector file. The other two are DST or machine files. The first DST is the same size as the original EMB, and the third file is an enlarged version of that DST. Comparing each has brought up a number of topics I think are worth talking about. The EMB file is 46.54mm wide with 5,678 stitches. The first DST file is 46.6mm wide with a stitch count of 5,668. And the third is 115.4mm wide and the stitch count is roughly the same as the others at 5,000. 734 stitches. What is interesting is the slight difference in the stitch count between the two DST files even though there is a substantial difference in the size of the two logos. As you can see the wide spacing between the rows of stitching in the second file and obviously a reduction in quality of the stitch out. Let's quickly look at the EMB file and alter the size to match the second DST file at 115.4 millimeters wide and the stitch count will rise to 19,844 stitches. And that is because the EMB file is a vector file and the stitch properties of spacing, underlay, etc. remain constant and the stitch count is increased to maintain the quality of the design based on these properties as it increases in size. A DST file in its natural state is a collection of independent stitch coordinates as that is all the information that your embroidery machine requires. Where to drive the needle in and where to move to next. The only other information included is that there is a colour change or a trim. Unlike the EMB file, the machine file does not know the colour, just that it is a colour change and that is why the colours will default to the colours in the working palette, starting with colour 1 and moving along as the list for each changes. When I engage the reshape tool, there are no objects to reshape, only individual stitch points. When this design is enlarged, the stitch count barely changes. The stitches just move further apart. If the design is made smaller, again the stitch count barely changes for the same reason. However, the software is able to help. When you open a DST file, you're presented with an option to recognize objects slash outlines. This attempts to recreate objects to make editing much easier. The software looks at stitch patterns to recreate vector objects, so they are easily edited. And when resized, the stitch count changes to maintain the density, stitch length, etc. But as you can see, the blue background has not been recreated as one object, as in the original EMB file, because some of the stitch patterns do not conform with the criteria the software uses to recognize and create objects. You can see here, when this part of the design is enlarged, the spaces between each object also enlarge, creating areas with no fill. This is where this design gets very interesting. Let's return to the original EMB file for a moment. The first thing I notice is there is no underlay and lots of travel run that has been created to accommodate the holes that have been made in the fill, I presume to save stitches. Notice the stitch count in the background is 2,466 stitches. Removing the holes has reduced the travel runs and also more importantly reduced the stitch count. So it's not always recommended to make holes in an embroidery object, especially not for small intricate shapes. I'll now export this file as a DST and reopen with the option to recognize outlines.
the background is not broken into pieces and is easily resized and the quality remains intact. The real lesson here is if you want to resize a design, resize the EMB file. But if all you have is the DST, then there are ways to deal with it.